In addition to writing for a number of publications, Ross Barkin also has his own substack called Political Currents, where he tracks lots of interesting things in politics, and especially um, Eric Adams, mayor of New York City. Welcome, Ross. Great to have you back. Good to see you, Ross. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me on. Always great to be here. Yeah, our course, pleasure. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and throw this first piece up on the screen that caught our eye. You said, Eric Adams wields his weapon of identity. It didn't take long. And Ross, of course, you had tracked the way that sort of consistently through his career, Eric Adams uses a just very surface level identity politics to mask a, what a lot of times has been a you know completely corporate agenda. And here's an instance, a very blatant instance of him uh, using his identity to sort of try to cow journalists into stop, you know, stopping with any tough questions or critical coverage. Just break down for us what happened here. So what happened was, was rather fascinating. Eric Adams, who's been the recipient of largely positive press coverage in his mayorality, certainly compared to Bill de Blasio, his predecessor, goes up to Albany, the state capital of New York, in an attempt to get the uh, bail laws changed um, in, in order to reintroduce more cash bail, uh, make it easier to try minors as adults in an attempt to stem you know, rising crime and murder. Uh, certainly it's debatable whether that would actually work. And um, these reforms were passed in 2019 during you know, a, a sort of swell of, of criminal justice reform measures. And Adams has been very intent on rolling them back since getting into office. He doesn't really have the power to do that because they're state laws, not city laws. And so he went to the state legislature. He asked them to do this. They said no. Um, you know, they had a polite press conference about it. And the press covered it. It, it was rather <laughs> unremarkable, to tell you the truth. And then Adams, at a press conference, goes on this rant about how um, there aren't enough black reporters and editors, which is true. Um, but then, you know, in essence, describes uh, the racism of, of the press um, you know, as, as a reason for allegedly negative coverage of his trip to Albany. And it, it was just detached from reality in multiple levels. One, the coverage was not negative. And two, um, you know, it, there, there was no element of, of race in, in terms of the way these reporters wrote about Adams at all, certainly in, in this uh, juncture. Uh, but already in February, uh, less than two months into his term, he's already um, invoking his identity in fights with the press, which is something I warned about last year. You did. And worried about because it's very convenient and easy and can shield him from a lot of serious scrutiny. Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting, Ron. You were very prescient um, in Eric Adams, and yet we were talking before the segment, he's pretty popular. Uh, he seems pretty good at politics. He's always like, coming down fire poles and he's got media ops and he's like trying to project vigor and energy and yet he can shield himself from a lot of criticism with identity politics. Have you seen any actual coherent efforts yet to try and push back against Adams in the city politics? Not ter not, not yeah. a lot so far. I, I One of my warnings for my friends on the left last year was that Adams is going to be a very difficult opponent for the reasons you described. He is popular, he's good at politics, he's really good at like the aesthetics of politics. He has no, I would argue, serious policy agenda yet in office. Uh, again, when Bill de Blasio came into office, he had these very clear policy goals he wanted to achieve. With Eric Adams, it's really a mis mishmash. There's not a whole lot, but there's a lot of performance and there, there are a lot of these kind of you know bellicose moments that he has, and now um, the wielding of identity to kind of shield you know what I would say is a sort of a centrist fiscal or conservative fiscal agenda, certainly around things like um, tenant laws um, and, and 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 rent laws, which are somewhat controlled by the mayor. That's something I'm watching. So you know the opposition to Adams, you know, it's it's come up in different places. You know right now he's embroiled in a controversy because he's trying to hire not one. But two, um, you know, former politicians and, and, and pastors who have very clear anti-gay views, and he's brought them both into government. And so there's been a, a little firestorm about that. Um, but, but generally speaking, I think the left writ large is figuring out what to do about Adams. Do you ignore him? Where do you oppose him, right? Because, yes, he is a wily operator, and he is very good at, at, at the 
substanceless part of politics, I would say, which does mm-hmm. matter if you're governing a large It state. matters a lot. Yeah. Well, and listen, no one wants to be called a racist. It's a horrific charge to make. And I think some of the people who would be um, – most concerned about being tagged as such are the type of, you know, white liberal reporters who are covering Eric Adams. Have you seen that sort of weaponization of his identity work throughout his career? And do you think it'll work for him with the press this time and sort of push them off of some of their tougher coverage? It's we- it's a weaponization they certainly has employed before. So, you know, obviously we're in this kind of moment where I- I'd say I- identity is being exploited to a unique and bad faith, um, in a unique and bad faith way. Um, not that that didn't always happen, but it feels like certainly in the last year or two, it, it is ramped up in certain political spaces, spaces where educated elites travel. Um, but it's something Adams has done for a long time. When he was Brooklyn Borough president, you know, he, he defended um, the illegal use of parking placards at Borough Hall by saying his white predecessor did it, so I'll do it too. They're not gonna be different laws or, or, or enforcement for uh, the white politicians. Um, and so it was sort of implying that as a black man, he could be corrupt too. Uh, so none of this is really new. The difference is the stage, right? Now he's mayor of New York City. Now he's at the center of everything, whereas before he was not. And to your point with um, reporters, that was a point um, I raised as well. And that was one of my fears that you have a press that's largely left-leaning, which you know, which is yeah. what it is, right? Uh, tends to be white, um, and so I do think there is a certain amount of guilt <laughs> in, in in parts of the press corps, and I do think attacks like these can work, where rather than hold their ground, reporters might go, "Well, no, no, I'm not racist. I will prove to you I am not racist, right? Through X, Y, Z." Yep. Um, well, how will that manifest itself? I don't know. But that was always my fear about this road Adams walked down, because in in the modern rules of bad faith identity politics, he will always trump the white reporter who went to the fancy college, right? Uh, Because he's the black man who grew up in a working class milieu. And so he's really uh, able to exploit that, even though he he himself is not working class anymore. He's a landlord. He has a lot of money. Um, So we'll see kind of how it manifests itself. But but it's a very real concern where... You do have a press corps that is vulnerable to being called racist and may not know how exactly to respond or to process it. And maybe we'll try to cater to Adams more. We'll see. I don't know how that's going to shake out. What do you think are his ambitions? Like, do you think he's content being mayor of New York City? Do you think he has statewide ambitions? Do you think he has national ambitions? And do you think that he has the putting aside his agenda? I keep hitting this can of hairspray that's over here. Um, (laughs) Do you think that um, putting aside his agenda, he has the sort of political talent to be able to perform on a statewide or national level? You know, he hasn't talked openly about his larger ambitions like Bill de Blasio did to kind of an awkward degree where immediately Bill de Blasio is floating himself for president, for for national office. And and of course, he tried and failed. Adams has been cannier that way where he doesn't talk about it so much. But, you know, statewide is tough because we have a new governor governor now, Kathy Hochul, you know, who's quite strong politically. She's not going anywhere. I would say nationally is always the interesting one, right? I think Adams certainly has already called himself the face of the Democratic Party. Um, He's drawn close to Joe Biden. I think a lot of centrist pundits like the idea of Eric Adams in the national scene, you know, black, tough on crime mayor. It's kind of checking a lot of boxes. So I would not rule out a future Adams bid for higher office, maybe who knows one day for president. Again, it's not something he's talked about in the way uh, Bill de Blasio did or Bill de Blasio tried at least to push. But I do think he is very ambitious. Now, that doesn't necessarily translate to getting particular policy goals accomplished in the city. It's a very interesting time right now because There's no overarching big idea of this administration. And I think for Adams, it's kind of more about playing a role, Um, you know, being this sort of spokesman for, I don't know, the the center flank of the Democratic Party and and kind of inserting himself into various places, hobnobbing with celebrities. What does that all add up to? I don't know. But certainly, I think, unlike de Blasio, the national pundit class likes Eric Adams a lot more 
And he's the type you'd probably get a more serious reception if somehow he ends up making a trip to Iowa. I, I think the national press would, would be That's more really interesting. Uh, yeah. Or Gideon, yeah. Uh, Woke corporatists are very popular with the uh, DC pundit class. So. I think he's going to run. I do. I could certainly yeah. see it. Um, Ross, your analysis here has been invaluable. I really recommend people go and subscribe to your Substack. It is called Political Currents by yep. Ross Barkin, and it's always great to see you, my friend. Link down in the description. Thank you very much, Ross. Thank you for having me. Great to be on. Our Anytime, pleasure. man. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, we've spotlighted this, but man, we've been just getting hammered on YouTube demonetization here, Crystal. I mean, it's like every day there's a new something, Epstein segment, you know, something gets doesn't get monetized or whatever. Look, it just shows you this is why we rely on you guys. And look, we have this new uh, live show that we're going to be doing for the State of the Union. We have some awesome new people. We're doing partnerships and hiring. You're going to be seeing a lot more content on the channel, and it is all thanks to the premium members who enable all of the infrastructure that gives us the editing resources, posting resources, studio time, and all the other attendant costs. So thank you all so much to those of you who have supported us. We really appreciate it. Link is down there in the description if you are able. Yep, we are expanding, guys. Super excited about our State of the Union live stream. That's gonna be fun. Gonna be awesome. That's our sort of first like. Yeah, it's our first live pro. Live is scary. I don't know if people a, realize this. You it know, is a different pulling deal. stuff in. You have guys in your ear. You have things that are happening. It's a dynamic situation. You got to move people in and out and mics. It's, it's fun. Though. It's a lot. Yeah, it's we a lot love of fun. doing. I love it. When yeah. we were yeah. back at the Hill oh. on Rising, we loved doing like the debate coverage oh. and so the like election night coverage. So I'm super excited about that. And like Sagar was saying we are expanding in terms of sort of the partnerships that we're yep. striking to make sure that we have, you know, a really rich library of content for you guys from people that we really like and trust. That doesn't even mean that we always agree with these people, but we think that they have interesting That's analyses that yeah. are, you know, relevant to you all and a good eye for content and are honest brokers and, and honest actors. That's so, all we can do. Yeah, so uh, stay tuned as they say. More announcements coming very soon on that front. Uh, guys, have a great day and we will see you back here on Thursday. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.